Coming up this morning on DITV, book tour. A presidential candidate stops to talk at Prairie Lights. And later, how the Flood Center is preparing for this warm weather. Declan's back, but it's not looking like Iowa basketball is. Stick around for our Big Ten tournament courtside show, where hopefully Lucy will be nicer to me. Will Iowa City be getting some sunshine during spring break, or will we be getting more rain? Stay tuned for weather to find out. All that and more coming your way on this Thursday morning edition of DITV. Don't go anywhere. DITV starts right now. Tuning in, I'm Anthony Calajuri. And I'm Mackenzie Cooper. We have a lot to cover today, so let's get right to it. 2020 presidential candidate Andrew Yang stopped in Iowa City last night for his book tour. Yang spoke to an audience at Prairie Lights about his book titled The War on Normal People, which highlights his campaign goals and political stances. After finishing his talk and book signings, Yang held a rally at the Iowa City Yacht Club. Yang is among a number of Democratic candidates promoting their political ideas with books such as U.S. Senators Kamala Harris and Bernie Sanders. An Iowa State Patrol trooper is being applauded for stopping a potential attack at Google's headquarters in San Francisco. A 33-year-old man crashed his car into a ditch on Interstate 80 near Adair, Iowa. Iowa Patrol Trooper Ryan Zinor showed up to help but became suspicious after learning the driver was traveling cross-country with nothing packed. The driver's car had baseball bats and directions to Google's headquarters, where the driver said he had a business meeting. And what did you say you're going yeah, down to for? for? A business meeting uh, at Google headquarters. So, uh, trying to sell a business that there's, there's issues. Pray for it. A business meeting uh, at Google headquarters. So, Authorities say the suspect, 33-year-old Kyle Long, was upset because his YouTube channel had been shut down. He then told his home hometown police that he'd get violent if his confrontation with Google, which owns YouTube, didn't go well. Long was arrested and is currently being held on $25,000 bond. A new ordinance is cracking down on the number of illegal massage businesses in the area. Last month, police began enforcing an ordinance requiring businesses to provide their state license number on a city form that will later be verified. Jory Bailey, Sergeant of Investigators for ICPD, said if a business is not in compliance, the Neighborhood Development Services has the power to shut down the practice or investigate it for criminal behavior. By enforcing this ordinance, Iowa City is following an example of Coralville, Cedar Rapids, and Urbandale. For more on this story, pick up a copy of today's paper where Daily Iowa reporter Josie Fishels tells more. A University of Iowa faculty organization is requesting the university create a sick leave bank. The group called Faculty Forward is asking that the university give 800 days that would be accessible to any faculty in the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences. The bank would also let people donate six, day, six days to faculty who have not gained enough sick leave time. Faculty Forward was formed two years ago after a professor with cancer needed 90 days of sick leave to apply for long-term disability. Other faculty members tried to donate their sick leave days, but the university did not allow it. For more on this, visit dailyisland.com. Iowa Republican Senator Chuck Grassley took the floor in D.C. to question the Green New Deal, a policy proposal from new House member Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. The Green New Deal was proposed by House Democrats to lower the risk of climate change, specifically bringing greenhouse gas emissions to zero. Grassley raises concerns. The Green New Deal is both breathtaking in its professed ambitions and, quite frankly, laughable laughably weak. It is just a resolution calling on the government to enact a whole range of policies. Why not introduce a bill then that actually does something rather than a resolution calling for future implausible actions? Now, the Iowa Senator says the U.S. is making strides on reducing its emissions, but that the Green New Deal requires too much government oversight. According to recent polls, nearly 90 percent of Iowa Democrats support proposals within the Green New Deal. After the 2008 floods, the Iowa Flood Center was established to help Iowa prepare and prevent floods through the use of technology. The technology they use can help Iowans understand how to get ready, ready for potential flooding this spring. DITV News reporter Melissa Meter has more. 
The Iowa Flood Center is celebrating its 10th anniversary. The center was established in 2009 to help Iowans prepare and recover from floods. This year, Iowa City has gotten a lot of snow and once it melts, there may be potential flooding. It's eventually going to melt and make its way into our stream, so um, there's definitely an elevated flood risk this spring because of that. Um, the severity of the flooding is going to be dependent on how quickly that melt happens and then also um, how much rain we get on top of it. The best way to prevent the potential flooding is to prepare for it. After the 2008 floods, Iowa City has implemented strategies to prepare for future floods in the areas located in the Iowa River floodplain. Relocations like Hanshire out of the floodplain. Uh, they've also um, built up the sidewalks, created invisible flood walls for uh, our campus to try and protect some of the newer buildings. Individuals can look at the Iowa Flood Center's community flood inundation maps to prepare and be aware of potential flooding for their area. Those allow people to look up uh, what a given flood map corresponds to a river forecast. Basically make a map for each stage reference. For more information about floods, visit the Iowa Flood Center's website. Reporting from the Maxwell Stanley Hydraulics Laboratory, Melissa Meter, DITV News. Well, Kenzie, I think everyone around here can agree that we're all loving this new warm weather. Yes, I agree. And Melissa didn't only just tell us about floods, she's also here in the weather studio to give us an update on the forecast. Good morning, Melissa. I don't know about you guys, but I definitely need some sunshine in my life. But today is not that day. So grab those umbrellas and rain boots. It's going to be windy, rainy, and humid. Today's temperature is a high of 54 degrees, and we have a 50% chance of rain and 77% humidity. There will also be strong winds around 20 to 30 miles per hour, and those winds could potentially gust up to 40. Tonight's skies will be cloudy, and the temperature will drop to 32 degrees. The same winds from earlier will stick around, and there's a 30% chance of rain showers. As we look to the extended forecast, it looks like weather is going to be staying pretty mild and consistent over the next couple of days. Tomorrow's temperature is going to be a high of 41 and a low of 27 degrees with partly cloudy skies and strong wind gusts around 20 to 30 miles per hour. The temperature will be a high of 41. As we head into spring break, we're finally going to be seeing a little bit of sunshine. This weekend's weather is going to stay pretty much the same. The skies will be partly cloudy with some sun here and the temperatures will stay in the low to mid 40s. Next week on Monday and Tuesday, the temperatures are going to warm up just a little bit. Monday will be mostly cloudy with temperatures in the upper 40s. And on Tuesday, those clouds stick around, but temperatures will move into the low 50s. That little bit of sunshine is really going to be nice, but I hate to break it to you. You're definitely not going to get that tan that you would somewhere warm over spring break. Anthony and Mackenzie, back to you at the desk. The Johnson County Crisis Center is nearing its 50 year anniversary and the center decided to rebrand with a name change. The Crisis Center will now be called Community Crisis Center and Food Bank. Leaders at the center chose to rebrand in order to better reflect the organization's expanded services. By removing Johnson County from the name, the center hopes to end the misconception that they are a government organization. Since, the since 1970, the center has provided support to people struggling with financial and emotional crisis. The Johnson County Historical Poor Farm is undergoing major changes. With the winter ice and snow thawing out, project manager Jason Grimm says the construction is expected to move more quicker. Renovations to the, the county's historical farm are part of a 10-year master plan to add educational workshops, hands-on gardening and farming, and other activities open to the public. Well, Anthony, we've had a huge weekend in sports last weekend, and it looks like we can expect that again this weekend. You're right, Kenzie, and let's not waste any time. Let's throw it over to Lucy and Declan in the sports studio to tell us all about it. Guys? Welcome to what could be the final courtside show of the year. I am your host, Lucy Rodine, and I'm joined by Declan Levy. Lucy, I think you only let me on the courtside show as a nice way to say sorry for making me cover that Nebraska game. How do you know? Well, you're 100% right, because that game, it was brutal. We saw Iowa give up 16 points in just 47 seconds. And I mean, outside of that, what in your opinion went wrong against Nebraska? Well, Lucy, how much time do we have here? They started off pretty well. They got off to a good start in both the first and second half, but ultimately they couldn't close. Just shot after shot being knocked down by Nebraska. Iowa just didn't have a response. 
I've never seen a team collapse like that as of late, and I know it's like a fluke game, but I think it was Iowa paying karma for all they've done uh, with those late law, uh, wins at North or against Northwestern, Indiana, and it's just the universe coming back to them. But even though that game made Fran McCaffrey as red as Nebraska, the team found some positive takeaways. I mean, I think individually and as a team, I think we had a lot better of a showing. Um, it just, you know, we, we played better, we shot better, um, played well enough to win, just didn't execute down the stretch. So, you know, there's still a lot of positives to take out of that game and uh, to move on from. We kind of broke out of, uh, you know, the slump of not really playing well, so. Lucy Garza is right. There's no question Iowa was in a slump shooting wise. And against Nebraska, we started to see some of those shots go in. Well, hopefully that'll carry into tonight's game. I will face Illinois, who beat Northwestern 74 to 69 in overtime last night in the opening round of the Big Ten tournament. So practice and game rep was a little bit different heading into tonight's matchup, but the players, it only adds excitement to the Big Ten tournament. It's a little bit different. I, to be honest, I don't know what practice is going to be like today. I don't know if we're going to scout both teams or, you know, what's going to happen. Um, but either way, we've played both teams before. So it's just another game. One game can decide what, how the tournament's going to shake out. So that's pretty special. And that can start from on Wednesday night games. Um, you never know who you're going to play. And um, those teams ahead of us, they don't know who they're going to play. So it just it, it acts as a really uh, fun environment to be in because it's everyone's kind of scrambling to get ready for the game. And um, it gets you more focused and more excited to play the next game. You can really hear the excitement in Bohannon's voice there. He told me uh, Tuesday at availability that he loves the Big Ten tournament because we know Jordan Bohannon. He likes those big moments. But tournament's obviously thrilling, but also serves as a clean sl slate. As far as I was concerned right now, they're 0-0. Zero zero. I mean, it's a new season. We're 0-0. We're zero zero. Everybody's 0-0 zero zero walking into here. So, you know, uh, you know, you can, you can, you can uh, you know, seal your own destiny, you, can, you know. Uh, and uh, you know, that's what we're looking to do. And you might wonder, how could they possibly be confident going into Big Tens on a four-game losing streak? And you would think I was down in a late-game situation because Jordan Bohannon has an answer. Knowing what we did this season, I mean, we went undefeated in non-conference and won 10 games and one of the toughest conferences in the, conferences in the country. And um, I mean, like, like you guys said, it's been, it's been tough the last couple of weeks knowing we haven't been played up to our abilities. But... I mean, just think about what we've done this season, how hard we worked in the season, and um, the type of teams we've been playing to get ready for this type of atmosphere. I think it will help us going into Chicago. Now, it's one thing to say you're 0-0 zero zero on the season, but do they really mean that? I think that's something easier said than done. I mean, you're going in with a four-game losing streak, and you lost to some teams you really shouldn't have lost to. So mentally, I don't know where Iowa's at right now. I mean, they are 0-0, zero and zero, but you know what? So is everyone else, except for Illinois, who's, you know, 1-0. Exactly, and Iowa's not going to come out there and say, yeah, we're really nervous going into this game. They're going to show their confidence, and hopefully we'll see that on the court. But like Iowa, we've got to move forward. So I just want to put on the record that I was on a six-game winning streak for predictions until I brought you on the show. Yes, Lucy, we all remember your six-game win streak. You haven't given us a chance to forget. Well, can you blame me? But Declan, what's your prediction for Iowa's game tonight? Well, I'm going to stick with how I thought these last few games were going to end, and I think Iowa will come out there and really give it to Illinois. Uh, they played well against them. They match up well against them earlier in the year. I see a, a victory for Iowa. I'm going to take Iowa in this one, and not because I trust Iowa right now, but because Illinois' game went into overtime last night, so they're going to be really tired, and I just think that Iowa does match up with them really well, so I'm taking the Hawks. But if I'm wrong again, we all know it's your fault. Fair enough. That's it for us in the sports studio. Back to you guys at the desk. And thank you for tuning in to this Thursday morning edition of DITV. For DITV, I'm Mackenzie Cooper. And I'm Anthony Callagher. Have a great day, Iowa City, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow.